We are back with another episode of Dynasty Decisions, number 108, where we tackle your Dynasty teams. We got seven teams submitted, a couple free ones in this video as promised. So we're going to go through all of your trade questions, all of your rookie pick questions. We're getting down to the wire in terms of the peak Dynasty fantasy football offseason. The uh, draft is actually a month from today as we're recording this. So appreciate you guys for all the support on this series as always, but let's get right into it. All right, so we are into the first team here. We got AJ's team, a fateful submitter of Dynasty Decisions <laughs> over years past. A 12-team PPR, six-point per passing touchdown. Half tight end premium, uh, super flex league. Nothing going on in the cabinets really overall, but especially at quarterback, Brissett, Jameis, and, uh, Jameis Winston, none of those guys there. Roshan Johnson, Chase Brown, Kendra Miller, a bunch of upside, but nothing um, substantial at running back. Justin Jefferson, Drake London, Quentin Johnston. At wide receiver, Sam Laporta and Cole Komet at tight end. Pretty barren roster. He does have a lot of draft capital, 103, 108, 111, 202, 203. Um, an early first projected in 2025 with an extra pick there. Um, basically, this is um, this is a bad, bad team. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? And then we'll kind of get into some of the questions and uh, the trade that he made here. For sure. Uh, I mean, obviously, you got a couple needle movers at the top there with a guy like Justin Jefferson, Drake, uh, Drake London, Sam Laporta. But for the most part, like Corey kind of said, uh, you're lacking both the star power and the depth. This is definitely going to be a team you're going to have to retool. But luckily for you now, looking at the assets that you have, the 103, the 108, the 111, all the seconds and thirds that you have this year, multiple picks in 2025, all your picks in 2026. Like you have the framework to be able to turn it down, but you're going to have to be able to do some work with this team. Yeah, and I guess he already did make like a major move in terms of tearing down for more assets, the ability to hit on more stuff here. So he sent away Amon Ross St. Brown, Deshaun Watson, and Zach Moss in exchange for Drake London, the 108, 202, 203, and 309. And again, do you want to sell a guy like Amon Ross St. Brown? Absolutely not. You would love to hold that production, get that top end wide receiver one that he's going to be at a young age in uh, from a redraft standpoint. But Outside of Justin Jefferson and Amon Ross St. Brown and Sam Laporta on this roster at the time, you really had nothing else going on. You kind of had to tear down, get yourself, I mean, he's also a Falcons fan too, get yourself a stud young wide receiver that you could build around back in Drake London, and you get the 108, the 202, the 203, and the 309. A lot of picks that you can use, throw some darts at this wide receiver class, and you offload Deshaun Watson, who's a little bit more of a risky asset as well. So. Again, in, like you don't love making moves like this, moving off of studs for like depth and draft picks and getting, you know, giving up the best asset in the deal like you did here with Amon Ross St. Brown. But when your roster is in shambles like this, you kind of have to make moves like this. Yeah, the way I kind of see it is, I mean, Zach Moss, give or take, worth the 309 for the guy that's acquiring it. It's basically turning the two assets of Amon Ross St. Brown and Deshaun Watson into Drake London 108, 202, and 203. Now with Deshaun Watson at this current point, given how in, uh, inconsistent his market is, given how he's kind of viewed, you know, varied across the map at this current point, he's probably worth at least maybe one of those seconds in this deal. I would say probably the 202 or the 203. So if you're equating it, Drake London, the 108, the 202 in exchange for Amon or St. Brown, start nine, maybe you would have wanted uh, instead of that 309, a, another second, but I have no faults here. Like, like Corey said, you needed to be able to turn your two uh, two bigger assets into multiple parts while still getting a solid asset back in Drake London. I don't mind the move. On top of that, of course, we've been talking about this rookie class as a big time top eight, especially if JJ McCarthy gets that draft capital. Who knows, man? Like whether that's Drake London or sorry, whether that's JJ McCarthy, whether that's Brock Bowers, whether that's uh, Roma Dunze at that 108, you're basically guaranteed to get a top 40 valued asset in Superflex. Yeah, and I mean, knowing that you need quarterbacks, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to walk out of this rookie gla uh, rookie class with, say, Drake May at 103 and um, J.J. McCarthy at 108, potentially, and build out yeah. your quarterback core a little bit more. But, I mean, it's pretty clear to me that you have a lot of work to do left on this team, yeah. and you understand that. I mean, you're asking, like, what kind of rookie pick should I be looking for Cole Komet? It's like, yeah, you're anybody that's worth anything, you're probably going to try and sell off of this roster. I'm also not opposed to doing something similar to what you did with Amon Ross St. Brown with Justin Jefferson. I know it's challenging at this point in time because Justin Jefferson doesn't really have a quarterback, so you probably stuck with him for the time being. But if you can get a similar tear down package where you get like a young upside wide receiver like Drake London and a bunch of draft capital to help retool this team, I'd be okay with doing something like that. As far as Cole Komet, ideally I would be looking for like second round draft capital of any, any kind. 
Any like ideally, I think he's actually worth like a mid second because he's about to get Caleb Williams as his quarterback. But beggars can't be choosers. If all you can get is like a 2026, two and three, you might have to just take something like that. Any second he's off my team. Obviously, if you can keep a three as well, absolutely. But Cole Komet, he's not the type of guy that's going to kill you in terms of a value standpoint. Even if he gets Caleb Williams and produces like he's worth what max, what Jake Ferguson's worth at this point. Yeah, I mean, the worst case scenario is you're losing a couple picks in the second round, yeah. probably, of value. It's like if he's worth 206 now, he might be worth 202 with a great season. Like, it's you're not going to miss a whole lot there. So, yeah, try and get him off of your roster. I mean, Quentin Johnson, also a guy that obviously face planted. If anybody's excited about him right now because Mike Williams and Keenan Allen are no longer there, I would be looking to sell him. Same goes with Chase Brown right now. Um, get he's too? in line. Him and Zach Moss are potentially going to be the starters there. Kendra Miller has some value and some appeal on the open market. Really, anybody that has any kind of value, I'm going to try and re-roll into like second round draft capital in 2024 and 2025 because your team needs so much that you basically just have to fire darts at the dartboard. Yeah, I think we pretty much covered uh, in terms of the team what you got to do in terms of the draft picks. Obviously, stay liquid. Obviously, you know what you're doing in terms of evaluating the market uh, during the rookie draft. But let's just say you're, you're sticking and picking. 103, we're probably looking towards Drake May given the status of your quarterback core. 108, kind of seeing, like I said, uh, who of the big gate falls to you, whether that's most likely going to be a guy like Roma Dunze, J.J. McCarthy. You already Hopefully, have it's not it's like the one position you don't need a guy at. With the 0.5 tight end premium, I'm pretty confident that he should be off the board. But if you're left sticking down the barrel of Brock Bowers at the 108, maybe at that point you see what Sam Laporta can get you in the draft. Can Sam or Laporta you trade get down you? potentially too? If you can or get 110 down. plus a you know future second or whatever, you could always just trade down a spot or two. The thing is, is like I do view a, a big difference between the 108 and the 110. So instead of trading for 110 plus a second, I would maybe see if you can get a 2025 and a 2026 or something like that. Can you get a middle projected 2025 and a 2025 second at that point? I would rather go towards the next draft class rather than trade down in this draft class. Cause like you said, you don't really need the production this year, given the state of the team. So if you can transition that into more future capital, people already understand the 2024 class projects better to the 2025 than 2026. Maybe you can get some discount discounts on those future picks. Yeah, that makes some sense too. So yeah, you got some flexibility here, but your team needs a lot. So you're going to just be going best player available for the most part with all of your picks. Uh, I believe we can move on to next the next team here, which is from Mikey T, a 10-team half PPR, one quarterback, start eight. So very shallow league format here. Justin Fields, Bryce Young, uh, Will Levis, and others at quarterback. Devon Achan, uh, Tajay Spears, Ty Chandler, Roshan Johnson, and others at running back. Jamar Chase, Chris Olave, JSN, Jonathan Mingo, Wald Wandale Robinson, and some others at wide receiver. And then Tucker Craft, Pat Frymuth, Isaiah Likely at tight end. Does have the 101 in this year's class, so presumably you're adding Marvin Harrison Jr. to this mix at wide receiver. You do have the 201, the 202, which again is a 10-team league, so those are actually the 111 and 112 in a standard 12-team uh, format, but it is a start eight, so again, those picks not going to be quite as impactful knowing that uh, you need studs, basically. But the nice thing is you need a couple things for this roster, and you might have a shot at some running back talent there at the 201, 202, or more wide receiver talent to help build out your depth of this roster. Because, I mean, looking at this team, outside of your wide receiver core, once you add Marvin Harrison Jr., you're, ma you're missing star power across the board at quarterback, at running back, and at tight end. Honestly, I have a pretty pretty simple solution uh, for for how I would approach this team. And obviously, we don't want to pigeonhole names uh, or players to draft picks at this current point. But I mean, the one hundred one, we don't have to theoretically talk about what could happen after the NFL draft. The one hundred one, ten man start eight, non super flex league. You are taking Marvin Harrison Jr. I don't think that should be up for debate. The two hundred one, two hundred two, like you said, Corey, uh, Corey mentioned, you do need running backs on this team. You have the Vaughn H, and you don't have much else in terms of competitive assets at that position. It's clear you're getting at least one, possibly two running backs at that spot. The three hundred one, man, like we're we've talked about a little bit on this channel about how much we believe in a guy like Ben Sonat. This is the type of team I'd be willing to add him to. The three hundred one is about the appropriate value, I would say, after the NFL draft assuming he gets day two NFL drop capital, whether that's round two, round three, I think he would be the perfect addition, the upside shot to this tight end core. Because while I believe in Pat Fryermuth to potentially bounce back, while I like the potential ascension value that Tucker Craft showed in his rookie season, I do think you probably need at least one more tight end that possibly has the upside to be a top eight guy at this current point, which I have a little bit more reservations of when it comes to Fryermuth and Craft. Yeah, it's it's really difficult too because like we're gonna look at his trades here, and I love the move that you made on October fifth during the season. You sell off Austin Eckler, you get the one hundred seven and three hundred seven. Definitely a great move. 
it's wild. I had some deja vu for a second. I'm like, have we covered this team already? No, this we have not covered this team yet. I don't we, believe we have. Like, we have up? covered this. We have covered this team. He said he had some updates in these last few weeks, so he resubmitted it. Okay, so we did talk about his Tajay Spears trade already, yes. where he ended up buying Tajay Spears, and yeah. I think we ripped him a new one for that one because yeah. we're like, this is the risk of doing that, right? Tajay Spears has Tony Pollard added to his backfield and all that kind of stuff. So again, we won't harp on that again. Uh, the Devonte Adams sell of uh, him for Tyler Algier in the two hundred two again, maybe you would have wanted a little bit more than that, but again, that's the one twelve yeah. in a ten team league, so it's yeah. not a terrible return. He did say um, the final one he made, a uh, final trade he made, he received a Chan and sent his one hundred seven, which he got in the Austin Eckler trade. So again, I, I don't know if we had sh we had talked about your team prior to you making that a Chan trade, but you're not in the business of buying players. So I, I think the the mindset of what you're doing there by selling the 107 for A-Chan, again, I think that's fine value for A-Chan. I think he's probably worth a little bit more than that one QB. in a one quarterback league. It's just yeah. difficult to be buying players with the team status you have right now. I mean, I'm a little bit more optimistic on the team because it is a start eight. And if we're looking at the starting lineup, we can build assuming you add a running back possibly two at that 201, 202 spot. You're looking at, let's just play hypothetically here. Uh, the quarterback would definitely be the issue, actually, to be honest, now that Justin... And the tight end, too, man. Like, I, I think you look That's at this fair. team and it's like, okay, wide receiver core will be good. Running back core could compete if the rest of the team was really good. But yeah. I see a team oh, destined fair. for, like, sixth place when I look at this team. Yeah, no, that's actually a fair call. Maybe instead of double dipping at running back, you do take one of the quarterbacks at the 202 to give yourself some upside. But yeah, no, that that, that is a fair point. On top of that, not having your 2025-1 in the Paul Spirit. Again, we're not going to harp on this deal. We've already talked about this deal. It's just, it hamstrings you a good amount not having that 2025-1. Even if you were in uh, what you consider to be a house money uh, year, you wanted to see how the year went. Maybe you started four and one, five and one next year, and then you wanted to push your chips in. I would have much rather have done that because that 2025 one in the middle of next season could have got you more buying power to buy a veteran at that point. And obviously now the sunk cost of Tajay Spears from a liquidity standpoint won't be able to do the same. Yeah, and he talked about, he's like, I thought I could contend next year, but with NFL free agency taking its toll on my team, Justin Fields obviously being the biggest example of yeah. that, going to the Steelers where he's not even slated to start. He's like, I'm not sure the direction at this point. And that's never a situation you really want to be in where you're you're operating a directionless team. He said both teams in the 102 and 103 don't need a quarterback. So I thought about trading back to 103. So I got to preface this with, is this a super flex league and you misfilled out this form? Because if it's a super flex league, this changes your team a little bit because you have a half decent quarterback core at that point and you'd be taking Caleb Williams yeah. at 101 and not Marvin Harrison Jr. But I hope, you know, because we talk from a super flex frame of mind all the time. I hope you're not just taking that advice and applying it to your league because this is, if it is a one quarterback league, do not take a quarterback at 103 or trade down from 101 to take a quarterback. You can get a quarterback in a one quarterback league at that 201 or that 202 spot. So again, I, fill us in in the comment section. Make sure to let us know if this actually is a super flex league, but we're operating with the information we have here, which is that you have it listed as a one quarterback league. I'm confused though, because if you say that the 102 and the 103 don't need a quarterback, let's just say it, it was a super flex. If the 102, 103 don't need a quarterback in a start eight, 10 man league, why would you want to trade down to the 103 if you want Marvin Harrison Jr.? Like that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess the thought process there, he said, I'm pretty set on taking Marvin at 101. Like he said, it's like, again, you need a quarterback. So if this is a super flex league, I would just take Caleb Williams 101 is the way I would look at this. Like I, you could try and get cute if you want to, but I, I personally wouldn't. I would just take Caleb Williams 101. I do think it's a one quarterback because this is start eight. And when you add up the roster spots, it does end up equaling eight. So now I'm, I'm I know I'm confused. just confused because he says <laughs> uh, the teams at 102 and 103 don't need a quarterback. So I'm yeah. thinking of trading back. It's like if it is a one quarterback league, you should be able to get Jaden Daniels or Drake May with 201 or 202. Yeah, no, 100 percent. I agree. Yeah, so for sure. Either way, look at this team. You got to really not be impatient. Like, I, I'm sorry to say this, yeah. but you've been impatient so far with some of the moves that yeah. you've made. The Tajay Spears move, the Devon Achan move. You're just taking unnecessary risk, in my opinion. I think yeah. that the players you're going after, like, they're talented players. Like, I don't think that's a terrible thought process from that perspective, but you're caught between a rock and a hard place right now because I don't think this team is good enough to compete next year, and you don't have your 2025 first. Yeah, no, it's, it's really a tricky spot to be in. And again, not to harp on the deal, it's just... I, I'm trying to understand the rationale at the time. Like maybe you were in a competitive window, but even if you were in a competitive window at the time, if you, if you had assumed you were in a competitive window, 
you could have gotten a player that gave you more production immediately. I think it was a projection that you're making there with Spears, right? Like if that's the deal you're talking about, it's like you're going after Spears for a 2025 first. He was not costing that much at the time. Like you didn't need to spend that. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, I mean, not to dwell on it, whatever, projecting forward, obviously, you are you are caught in a tough spot. We're not going to project that you aren't because realistically, if there's a one quarterback, you don't have the firepower at quarterback or tight end. And while I do feel like you have the draft capital to be able to patchwork at wide receiver out after those first three names, patchwork your running backs, whether that's Trey Benson and Jonathan Brooks, whether that's, you know, assuming our running back one and two in this draft consensus after the NFL draft. You're going to have three usable running backs, three usable or four usable wide receivers, but not much left in the coverage for quarterback and tight end. Yeah. So my first course of action with this team would be to try and get my 2025 first back. And if you can, yeah. maybe even offload some production in the process so that you can tank that first down a little bit, because maybe yeah. the guy you sold Taj or you got Tajay Spears from still really likes Tajay Spears and you could go after him and, and, uh, finagle like a package deal to get your first back using Tajay Spears or hell I would sell a chance straight for your own 2025 first no problem like I would personally do that as much as a chance a great player like that trade that you made of Tajay Spears for the 2025 first like that first is on track to be a top five pick so yeah. I probably would would try and get that first back before you do anything else and I would not try and compete in 2024 yeah, no, I agree. I think we pretty much summed it, uh, summed it up. I feel like we can move on to the next team here, and that's going to be from Austin. Yeah, 12-team PPR, four-point per passing touchdown, half tight end premium, super flex. Anthony Richardson, Matthew Stafford, Bryce Young, Daniel Jones as the quarterback core, B. John Robinson, ETN, A-Chan, and company at running back. Uh, Garrett Wilson, Puka Nakua, DK Metcalf, Drake London, Jaden Reed, and Josh Downs. Kyle Pitts, Dalton Kincaid, and the 109, 203, 303, 305, and all of his future picks. So, Good team, right? You look at the roster, it's a pretty well-balanced team. It's a start eight, so you want to have that good starting lineup, and you definitely do with the quarterbacks you got. I mean, quarterback's probably your weakest position, but I think Richardson and Stafford and Young and those guys, that's still a fine quarterback core. It's just like the weakest position on your roster. Your running back core is loaded. Wide receiver core is quite deep as well, and you have two very solid tight ends. Hear me out, though. In a start eight super flex, I would try to see if you can upgrade that quarterback two spot if it's attainable. Obviously, if it's not attainable and people are really holding on to these top assets, like you kind of mentioned, people are hesitant to trade. That makes sense. But knowing that you have the team that you do in a start eight, like if we're just filling out a starting lineup, let's say quarterback one, Anthony Richardson, your two running backs, obviously B. John Robinson, Travis Etienne, two wide receivers, Garrett Wilson, Puka Nakua. Your flex is either going to be Devon H. Chan, uh, DK Metcalf, Drake London and your tight end's probably going to be Kyle Pitts. The thing that you need now is a solidified, you know, top 15 quarterback in a super flex league. Can you add Matthew Stafford plus the 109 and see if you can get maybe even Dak in a piece back? Like, can you do that type of deal? Yeah, I mean, he has Nakua for the stack, so I actually don't, I don't Fair. think I'm totally maybe like Bryce. I have to trade for another quarterback. What I would actually try and do instead yep. is take Bryce in the 109 and get off of yeah. the risk that Bryce Young is, and see if there's a Bryce Young truther in your league that you can sell that pick to and sell Bryce Young to, and maybe Bryce plus the 109 gets you up to Justin Herbert because he's on the low right now because he lost his receivers. You know what I mean? Yeah, or maybe maybe if you can't get uh, Justin Herbert, let's just say Tyler. In your I was going to say Kyler was the name I was thinking of. Let's just say in most leagues, Bryce Young, you know, a little bit more of a bump now because he got uh, some help in free agency with Deontay Johnson. They're expected to get a receiver in the draft. Maybe post NFL draft, he's worth the 109 himself or the 108 or something like that around there. Basically like what JJ McCarthy's worth. 108 plus 109, theoretically, in terms of liquidity, that might be able to net you Kyler Murray. And in a start eight league, knowing the fantasy point per game upside Kyler Murray has, paired with the fantasy point per game upside that Anthony Richardson has, like you're talking about a starting lineup that is probably going to get at least 20 per game at the quarterback in the super flex spot. So you're talking about 40 points advantage right off the bat on top of Garrett Wilson, Puka, and the running backs, like we said. Yeah, and I think both between Bryce Young and Daniel Jones, one of those guys should be on the up after the NFL draft. If Daniel Jones gets a number one receiver at six overall and they don't draft a quarterback in the first three rounds, he's probably going to be a movable piece as well, too. You could take Daniel Jones potentially plus the 109 and go up for a better option at quarterback, or you could even take maybe J.J. McCarthy falls to you at 109. You could even take another quarterback just in the rookie draft as well. So you do have some options with this team. The nice thing is that your team is ready to compete, really, even if you do nothing. It's just that quarterback two spot, like you said, maybe could use some uh, additions to it. So 
Um, he said the rosters are a bit thin. I know I probably should look into getting some studs at quarterback and at wide receiver, but he's been struggling to get any deals done. Again, as long as you're looking into it, that's you, all you yeah. can really do at this point. Um, he said thoughts on who and what kind of deal I should go for. I think we just discussed that. Um, he did make some trades here um, mid-season last year, uh, like week three or whatever. He sold Keenan Allen in the 205 for ETN. I thought that was definitely a pretty solid move. Sells Christian Watson, the 302 for Josh Downs. Again, that was a risky move at the time for sure, but I, I I think Josh Downs, I prefer to Christian Watson in Dynasty, so that's a pretty solid move. And then um, on March 11th, so this would have been shortly after, I guess Keenan Allen would have been traded or maybe he hadn't been traded yet. Mike Williams been traded or uh, been cut. I don't know. He sold off Quentin Johnson in the 205 for Matthew Stafford in the 303. And knowing that you have Puka Nakua, I think that was a pretty good patchwork move to get yourself a solid competitive QB2. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he has some... Uh some notes on the trades. So the one wanted more depth at QB, maybe could have waited to see what the draft looked like, but I like this price. QJ was a bit of a roster clogger. And like he said, there's only 10 bench spots. So there's no use on keeping roster cloggers. And we talked about this on last dynasty's decisions. And you're in a league where there is shallow benches. We're talking 10 man, 15 man benches, not your typical, you know, 20, 25 bench league. At that point, man, like people might be focused. Ooh, like did I miss out on some value for a guy that is a roster clogger for me anyways? Like, I could care less if Quentin Johnson plus the 205 nets me the 203 in the league if I was already considering qu uh, cutting Quentin Johnson to begin with. So the fact that you profited, you got a starting caliber quarterback who is absolutely not a roster clogger on your team, whereas Quentin Johnson, despite people being more optimistic where he was, at that point, it's Quentin Johnson, the asset versus Gainwell versus Miller versus Roshan Johnson versus Claire Herbert. Like, obviously, like I would prefer Quentin Johnson. Like Mac Jones, to too. Chicken right? Conquo. Like, like he he's in that realm of oh, he's the type of player I would cut if I need to uh, create some space. So the fact that you got maybe your quarterback th uh, two, possibly quarterback three after the draft if you move Bryce Young, I'm not going to fret on that at all. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, he said he wanted to pair Downs with AR because he's a Colts fan, so maybe some bias there. I, I think that's fine. That's totally, totally cool with me. And then he said guy I traded was a big contender and had plenty of running back depth, took advantage of this and filled the running back gap I had at the time. So that was the rationale for the ETN trade. The one thing I will say about the Downs trade is knowing that it's a start eight. I like Josh Downs, don't get me wrong, but he definitely has more value in deeper leagues, like yeah. deeper PPR leagues where you could start up to 12 guys or whatever. Whereas Christian Watson, the guy that you traded for him, is more of the upside guy that could make yeah. your roster each and every week in a start eight. So the rationale of the two players that were in that deal to me is a little bit different. But I guess, I guess again, you're the Colts fan. You're probably just wanting to stack up your dude. I'm not going to blame you too much for that. I just personally probably would have held Christian Watson knowing the league format that you're in. But if Christian Watson blows his hamstring for the 40th straight time this year and Downs has a breakout season, then you're going to look a lot smarter than me at this moment. For sure. I mean, overall summary, because I feel like for the most part, you're in a good position, especially given the future draft capital, the capital that you have this year, the depth that you have in a start eight league. Like I'm honestly, if I can leave this draft, not having to spend the majority of those picks in 2024, that's where I want to be. You already have more than enough depth in a start eight. Try to upgrade some of your pieces. Like we said, Bryce Young plus the 109. See if you can go get Kyler Murray. If that doesn't work out, maybe it's more like, for example, like, People might be low on Dak right now. People don't know if the Cowboys are going to bring back Dak. There's a report from Rap Sheet yesterday. Maybe you can get Dak in another contending piece for Bryce Young in the 109 right now because Dak is worth like the 107 in your league. Yeah, you could you could go in your position players even too and, and see if yeah. Puka Nakua plus 109 gets you to one of the top three studs or uh, Travis Etienne plus 109 gets you Jameer Gibbs plus a second or something like that. You might be able to upgrade your position players as well. So yeah, I mean, your team's in a really good spot. You're going to be a competitive roster no matter what. Um, let's move on to the next team here, which is from Arthur. You guys can see the team on the league, or the team on the league, team on the screen here. 12 team, half PPR, four point per passing touchdown, super flex. Does have Burrow and Jordan Love. That's pretty much all you need at quarterback, but you probably do need a quarterback three at some point. Bijan Robinson, Ramondre Stevenson, Roshan, Chase Brown, and others. Um, T. Higgins, Calvin Ridley, Deontay Johnson, Christian Watson, and others at wide receiver. Greg Dolchich, Chica Conquo, and some other guys at tight end. Does have a lot of uh, you know draft capital in the cupboard as well, though. 102, 104, 107, 202, 209, 304, 402, 404, and 407. And then looks like all of his future draft picks. So he said he was thinking about competing last offseason, but he kind of misjudged his team and he had some injuries, sold off some pieces for some draft capital during the year, as we'll talk about. And he tried to tank his pick, which ended up becoming the 102. Um, and he said, what do you recommend with the picks? And then also, should he trade any veterans? And then kind of just the overall status of the team here. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, clearly looking at the team, 
Burrow love is more than enough at the quarterback position in a start nine super flex league. Like you're talking about two of the top 12 or so dynasty quarterbacks in the landscape. So clearly you have a leg up on your competition there. Running backs there. Bijan Robinson is your anchor. Ramondre Stevenson. After that, there's a lot of projection, I would say. Wide receivers. I'm not going to lie. Very weak wide receiver core comparatively if your goal is to potentially contend this year. I like T. Higgins, but he's more so a two or three at the minimum or at the maximum, in my opinion. If you're a contending team, I typically want T. Higgins to be my wide receiver three. Ridley, same thing. I would rather him be my wide receiver four. Deontay Johnson, I'd rather be my wide receiver five. Christian Watson, a nice depth upside piece at wide receiver, but saying that you're going to be relying upon him on a week in, week out basis, not ready to put that type of expectation on Christian Watson. On top of that, outside of maybe Greg Dolchich, you have virtually nothing at tight end. So good thing you have a lot of picks this year because I do think that a turnover is necessary. And yeah, if, if you judge this as being a, a top contending team last year, I do think you 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 kind of rushed it a little bit. The nice thing about this is your team's needs align perfectly, perfectly with, your with draft the draft pick. Yeah. Like 102, Marvin Harrison. 104, Malik Neighbors. 107, Brock Bowers. Like this is perfect. It's exactly what you need for this roster. 202, yep. 209, you could take some more shots at wide receiver, at running back potentially. Running you could back. take another shot at 202. The, the nice thing is that your team's needs are perfectly aligned with where you're going to be picking and probably where the value lines up on the board. The only real risk yep. you have there is that if neighbors goes 103 or Marvin goes 101 or something like that. But for the most part, you're you're in a really good spot in terms of the way that uh, things align for you. He did say also, I mean, he has all his trades listed here. It looks like last rookie draft, he sold Pitts in the 104, which became Bryce Young for Bijan and Kendra Miller. That definitely worked out for you. But if that was CJ Stroud, I, you would have gotten raked over the coals. That's what I quickly want to talk about this because obviously looking back, seeing how much value uh, Young lost, like you're taking Bijan here, but you are fucking lucky that that wasn't CJ Stroud. If that was CJ Stroud, because at the time, if you had made this deal and I had seen this deal, I probably was my 104 I was CJ Stroud. So I, yeah, I would have sketched me out. I would have scolded you for it. I would have said, listen, like as much as I like Bijan Robinson, I'm not giving Kyle Pitts plus a starting caliber quarterback rookie top two pick for B. John Robinson. So the fact that this wasn't CJ Stroud, you got to be you know, th thanking the Lord up above because that could have turned out really bad for you. Yeah, Gibbs too. If that was Gibbs, that would have yeah. probably been a bad deal as well. Um, But I don't know. Gibbs and Bijan pretty close. Eckler, he sold off during the season that he talked about. He sold off some pieces during the year. Love he got 104, deal. 304, and 404 for him. <laughs> so I, I don't know how he did that. I guess that was October 8th. So, I mean, Eckler wasn't really thought of as like a bust in fantasy at that point in time. But even still, getting 104 for a 28-year-old running back was a huge, huge W. If you were trying to sell Eckler right now, do you even get the 304 and the 404? Yeah, you probably I would buy him for that. <laughs> but like that's what I, that's about his value. He, he get you get a mid second in running backs are gold leagues. Like people who value Maybe. running backs would give a mid second for okay. Eckler, but that's his value now, and you got the one hundred four for him. So definitely a, a great move. If there. you're in a sharp league, FSE league, analyst league, like it's probably closer to the three hundred four and the four hundred four. So the fact that you got the one hundred four when you sold, great timing. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I would, I think Eckler's worth more than the 304 and the 404, but definitely uh, great timing for you there. Purdy for the 107 and 208. I think that's Mash. give or take about what he's worth. Yeah. I actually slightly prefer Purdy, but you have Burrow and Love already, QB3. so it's yeah. not it's not a huge deal. Yeah, I mean, the way I kind of see it is like, yeah, do I prefer Purdy over, uh, like, like for example, if JJ McCarthy's the 107 or Brock Bowers the 107? Yeah, I'll have them slightly ranked higher. Like, I'll have Purdy as a top 36 asset. I'll probably have Bowers and JJ McCarthy more so as top 45 assets. But the 208 in the draft class, especially saying that you ended up flipping the 208 plus a 2025 20, second going up to the 202, we're talking about that potentially being a Trey Benson, potentially being a Jonathan Brooks. There, I'm cool with the move. Yeah, what are your thoughts on that move? Because he did say last month he sold the 208 and a 2025 second for the 202. He's like, the reason he did it is because he likes this class and he likes the value yeah. of early seconds. But if I was selling the 202, I would That's also I would like this deal from my perspective. I got two twos, uh, the 208 and the two. Uh, like this, the uh, class being good goes for and against you in this trade. It's like, yeah, you're going to get a good player at 202. You might get potentially even like a worthy or a lad McConkey there. Worst case scenario, it's like Adam A. Mitchell, Xavier Leggett. But at 208, you probably were going to get a good player there too. So that's what kind of sucks about this deal a little bit. I probably wouldn't have given up that 2025 20, yeah. second knowing it could have been buying power for you in season if yeah. your rookies hit because you're going to get Marvin, Malik, Neighbors, and Brock Bowers here. If those guys come out guns ablazing their rookie years, you are going to be a competitive team. This is like a prototypical oh, yeah. house money situation. And having that extra 2025 20, second of buying power would have been nice. 
No, I agree. I, I will say it, like, I probably would have been more on board if it was like the 304 plus the 25 second. I would have been able to rationalize it a little bit more. But I mean, given your spot, it is a start nine league. So that's key context. If it was a start 11, 12 league, obviously I'm going to go with the depth there. I'm going to go with the numbers. But if you have your guy at the 202 that you think could be available there uh, or a couple guys that you think are just a neck up above of what's going to be available at the 208 and you have, like we see here, a ton of assets to be able to make that type of move. I'm not going to fret against it, especially if that's your own second. You project that to be the 210 to the 212 next year. You're basically looking at the 208 plus, let's say, the 211, the 210 next year. At that point, I'm able to stomach it in the, in the start nine. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, as much as your picks align with what you should be doing in the rookie draft, I also would you know work the board if possible, too. I mean, if 102 can get you Justin Jefferson right now because he's on the downslope because of quarterback situation and someone's willing to take Marvin over Justin Jefferson at this point in time, because there's leagues yeah. where people are really down on Justin Jefferson. I don't think it's likely, but it's possible that you could work the board in that way. But like we said, 102 Marvin, 104 Malik Neighbors, 107 Brock Bowers. Don't want to assign players to rookie picks that way, but that's literally where they're ranked for me. So it aligns perfectly with uh, what you need for this roster. So, um, so I mean, real, again, looking at this team, you got some work to do, but it looks like a house money team to me. Hear me out. If somebody's low, like the type of deal I'd be willing to do. Cause I, I do want to keep that two Oh two uh, to add a running back. If I can assuming, cause like that's the honeypot for the draft this year. Uh, if you want a running back around that one twelve to two Oh three type of area, can you take the one Oh two and add a, again, a Deontay Johnson is a guy that loses a ton of value in a start nine. He's so valuable in like a start 11, start 12 league where your second, your third flex actually ends up being valuable in terms of the point production on a weekly basis and start nine. It's going to be seldom that he actually works into your starting lineup, especially when you add wide receiver with the one Oh two asset and possibly a Malik neighbors with the one Oh four. Maybe all it costs is 102 plus Deontay Johnson because this guy is absolutely barren at wide receiver to get a guy like Jefferson, to get a guy like Chase, to get a guy like CeeDee Lane. Well, yeah, Burrow too, so there. Chase would be yeah. uh, uh, an easy one. I guess you have Higgins too, so you could just go for the onslaught yeah. stack of Cincinnati Bengals. But yeah, regardless, I mean, you got moves that you can make. I think we could probably move on to the next team here, which is from Cliff, and this is the first free submission of the video, and I believe he's been waiting a while, so really glad that we got him on this video here, 10 team PPR, four point per passing touchdown, single quarterback league again. So very shallow start eight depth doesn't matter. Studs matter. Trevor Lawrence, yep. Kyler Murray, Bryce Young, Sam Howell, um, basically Zach Charbonnet, Tajay Spears, Devon A. Chan and Jalen Warren at running back. So decent, but not elite at the running back position. Justin Jefferson, Drake London, Chris Olave, uh, Jackson Smith, the Jigba, Tank Dell, Jaden Reed, Josh Downs, Jahan Dotson, Jerry Judy. Pretty decent wide receiver core, I do if I do say so myself. Kyle Pitts, Sam Laporta at tight end, also has just a loaded wide, like loaded pick capital. Man, I don't even know how the hell <laughs> you got the 101, 103, 104, 107 on top of the team that you have plus three 2025 first. So this is one of those teams that people in the comments say this guy's just posting this just to flex how oh, good his bro. team is. Like again, you have the luxury. This is pretty simple advice here. You have the luxury now with this roster. You're going to add Bro. Marvin potentially at 101, Romo Dunze or something at 103. I'm very likely to go out and buy other studs with this team. Go take your girl to the keg. Go have some fun. She doesn't need McDonald's today. I've already made that comparison before for like when people just have loaded rosters. But you have the luxury to be able to spend, man. Your, 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 your uh, overall cost is far outweighed by the income that you're bringing in with this team. Cause let's be real, man, you're deep at every position, but running back just, if it costs you the one Oh three to go and buy, or maybe the one Oh three plus the two Oh four to go and buy Jameer Gibbs, go buy Jameer Gibbs. Does it cost you the one Oh four plus another piece? Maybe that's fuck man. Even if it costs you the, what the one Oh four and the one Oh seven for Brees plus a piece back, I'm cool with making that move on this team, to be honest. And I guess maybe it would cost the one Oh four and the one Oh seven. Cause it is a single quarterback league. I'm contextualizing now, but go buy some hammers at running back. That's the only thing you need at this point to be able to compete. Yeah, I mean, you could even buy a hammer at quarterback too. You could take Trevor yeah. Lawrence plus the 107 and go buy Josh Allen with that potentially as well. You know what I mean? Like you could go after, just get studs, but make your starting lineup studs. the best that you possibly can. You have a start eight league, you have Jefferson, you have Olave, you have Lon you have a really good wide receiver core already and you might be adding Marvin to that. So for me, I'm I'm totally cool going and shot. And like your tight end core can't really get any better than Sam Laporta and Kyle Pitts, to be honest. You have yeah. an elite upside number two tight end and the best tight end in Dynasty is your number one tight end. So you're at a point in time with your wide receiver and your tight end core once you add Marvin 
leave them. Don't even touch them. Yeah. They're they're ready to compete. Running back and quarterback are the positions that I would probably be looking to upgrade if you can. Has a bunch of trades listed here. He ended up selling Damian Pierce and Jerome Ford during the season for the 204 yeah. and a 2025 first. Again, don't know how you got yeah. that, but good move. Tank Dell, JSN, um, he sold there for Jordan Addison and a 2025 first as well on March 1st. Um, so that was Fair recently. both ways. Yeah, I, I mean, Tank Dell and JSN for Jordan Addison in a one. That's close, man. I think I pref- like, I don't know, because he has Tank Dell and JSN on his team. Sorry, actually. I, so I, I actually like your side of that because you had yeah. Jefferson already too. So you sell off Jordan Addison so you don't have both Vikings wide receivers and you got JSN and Tank Dell out of one of those first that you banked and uh, and um, Jordan Addison. And then you sold off Jake Ferguson somehow for the 205. I don't even know how you got that. In, in this league, Jake Ferguson has like no value, especially knowing that you have Sam Laporta and Kyle yeah. Pitts at tight end. I could really care less what Jake Ferguson does yeah. for my team. And, and he says in this league that people are very redraft centric and don't value picks. Yeah, I mean, like it doesn't I shock me people. given your draft capital that you've built yeah. up here. So again, uh, if they don't value picks, it might be challenging for you to go out and buy a Brees Hall or buy a Bijan Robinson. But again, even if you have to overpay a little bit, I'm fine doing it. And worst case scenario, yeah. I mean, like mid season, you might be able to sell picks for like go and buy cost effective production if you have to. Yeah. Like if you can't get to Brees, Bijan, and Gibbs because they want 101 and 107 from you or something like that then maybe you can just buy Saquon Barkley or Josh Jacobs or somebody yeah. like that. Maybe Saquon Barkley costs like the 107 trade up or maybe 107 plus the 205 or something in a one quarterback league. I'd be able to stomach that knowing that Saquon Barkley is going to be a second round pick in redraft leagues. I mean, this is the type of team, like I understand it's more cost effective buying the nosebleeds to your favorite basketball team's game, but just go, go enjoy yourself. Go buy a box seat. Yeah, exactly. You got the ability to go shopping and have some fun with this. So let's uh, move on to the next team here. We got from Angelo, 12 team, half PPR, six point per passing touchdown, half point tight end premium. It is a one quarterback league. Also, uh, Kirk Cousins, Deshaun Watson, Sam Howell as the QBs, uh, Devon Achan, Tajay Spears, Zach Charbonnet, and others at running back, Jalen Waddle, Michael Pittman Jr., uh, Marquise Brown, uh, Jamison Williams, like not a whole lot going on at wide receiver there outside of Jalen Waddle and a couple guys, Kyle Pitts, CJ Hawkinson, Kate Otten, and others at tight end. 104, 107, 204, 207, and then all of his future picks by the looks of it, minus his 2025 fourth rounder. So did say it was his first year in Dynasty. He traded for um, Najee Harris. He sold the uh, 203 on September 26th for Najee Harris. I mean, I probably wouldn't have done that. But again, it's a one quarterback, 203. Yeah. So I don't think that's a terrible move. And then um, he did say decided to trade digs and all these other trades that we'll talk about in a second, commit to tanking this year. So then he got rid of Najee Harris shortly after. So I mean, when you look at this roster, what's the direction? Are you are you thinking it's, you know, a rebuild? Or is it any, like, because to me, I look at this and it's, it's again, we talked about this in our last video. This is kind of just a mid roster. Yeah, it's kind of mid across the board. And I understand it is your first year dynasty. So it's a learning experience, man. Like I've had teams that kind of don't know the direction. You got to figure out your direction. You got to stick to it. If you're going to compete, go try to make this roster into a competitive position. If you don't think you can compete, then take this roster with all these middling type of production players. Again, it is a start 11 league. So I'm assuming a lot of these players will still have some type of liquidity on the open market. See what you can get. Try to profit picks, try to dominate the 2025 draft class. Maybe even if it takes the 2026 class uh, draft class, try to dominate it. You have some pieces, but do you have one player that is going within the top two rounds of a startup at this point? I mean, I guess it's a one quarterback start 11. So like, you're going to have players that go in, in the first round because like Devon H and size is going to be propped up. Dylan Waddle's value is going to be propped up. Maybe they're, you know, top 15 level assets, but realistically like you don't, you're lacking a Jefferson. You're lacking a chase, a CD lamb, a Bijan, a Marvin Harrison, even a Puka Nakua, even a Garrett Wilson, even a, I mean, fucking even a Chris Olave. Like you, you don't really have the pieces that you would need from a needle moving hammer standpoint to be able to put yourself into a big time winning position. Yeah, absolutely. I think when you look at this team, it's just you, you don't have you have depth, but you don't have contending assets that are going to really move the needle for you now. So yeah. that's kind of the problem that you're at with this roster. It's like it's nice that in a one quarterback league, you can start up to 11 players. That definitely works in your favor to some degree. But at the same time, you don't have any hammers, like you said. So the trade he was talking about on September 30th, he did sell Stefan Diggs, Antonio Gibson, Najee Harris in the 303. In exchange for Marquise Brown, Tajay Spears, Tyler Algier, 107, and 207. So 
again, 107 in a one quarterback league is a little different, um, but I do think that that was a pretty good return for Steph Dig. Gibson and Najee Harris aren't worth a whole lot. I would prefer yeah. Spears to both of them combined, to be honest. And then Marquise Brown, Tyler Algier in the 207 are nothing to sniff at in terms of assets too. Yeah. So again, you have a lot of like guys that are solid on this roster, but nothing really in terms of hammers. So he does say he has a trade centering around the 107 and 207 for Mahomes. Again, it's a, a one quarterback league. So 107 and 207 to me sounds you're like not, about the right price tag for him. You're not in position to buy Mahomes, I don't think. But would you do that anyway, though? Because I, I I agree. I don't think he's in a position to buy Mahomes either. But at 107, I mean, you're giving up Lad McConkey yeah. and 207, you know, random like Jalen Polk or something no. like that for Mahomes. It's, like, I think that's enough yeah. of a like, I want studs on this roster, and that gets you a stud, which is nice. Yeah, no, that, that's fair. I'd probably do it regardless. Because again, my 107 to one quarterback's Caleb Williams, and obviously, I'd much rather have Patrick Mahomes to Caleb Williams. Okay, if that's all it costs. If you're, if you can do 107 to the 207, it's just the problem that I have, man. Is is that guy really going to take that for Mahomes? Like, I'd be shocked if he doesn't take 107 plus at least a future first. And at that point, it's like. Do I really want to give up the 107 plus a future first for Mahomes? No, but if you could do it with 107 and the 207, absolutely you're doing that deal. Yeah, again, but even once you get Mahomes on this roster, it's like your starting lineup is going to be Mahomes, Achan, Spears, I guess, Waddle, Pittman, Marquise Brown, Pitts is your tight end. Maybe Hawkinson finds your flexes. Like you still have to start another flex on top of that. It's like this team is destined for like sixth place. Yeah. Um, is the way I look at it. So you need to find a way, like Danny said, to like pick a pick a lane. Are you going to go? and try and win, which I don't think you can, to be honest. Or are you going to sell off some assets, stack up picks in the 2024 class, stack up picks in the 2025 class? I mean, your tight end position's locked down for the lock term with Kyle Pitts. To me, I would be looking to sell off TJ Hawkinson if I could. I'd be looking to maybe sell off Michael Pittman if I could. Marquise Brown just signed with the Chiefs, maybe try and sell high on him. Devon Achan is a young running back, but he's still a running back. Same with Spears. I would maybe be looking to sell on those guys. Again, this is a difficult position to be in. It's like your, your roster is like not... Um, conducive to winning yet, but it also is difficult because you don't have any studs to sell off really. So you kind of just need to hope that you can win a couple trades here and there. Maybe you do five trades over the next calendar year and you win four of them. Your roster is going to be in a lot better position as a result. And that's why my default here is going to be liquidating this team, to be honest, because I, I feel like you have players that should be able to get you a decent amount of draft capital. And if you can go about it, dominating one of these classes, whether that's the 2025 pick class, I'm absolutely doing it. Like if Devon Achan can net me maybe a late first in 2024 and another late projected first in 2025, I'm willing to do that type of deal. Can you transition these pieces that, despite being solid pieces that can win now if they're tertiary assets on your team, aren't necessarily fit in the profile of, oh, they are the hammers. They are what goes with this team. Yeah, exactly. So again, difficult position that you're in, but I do think you have some room to wiggle out of it if possible. Uh, the last team we're going to look at is from Danny. I don't know why Danny's submitting his uh, <laughs> teams to this uh, to this video because he's breaking them down, but no, different Danny, obviously. Um, 12 team, half PPR, half tight end premium, super flex league. Mahomes, Kyler Murray is the top guys. Jonathan Taylor, Devon Achan as the uh, top running backs with some fodder there behind them. Chase and Jefferson, love to see that, but nothing, nothing else. else. <laughs> Wide receiver position. Nothing else. Mike Williams, I guess, is your next best guy. Not a great situation there. George Kittle and uh, Greg Dolchich at tight end. This is like a prototypical studs and duds roster. You got yeah. two really good running backs, two really good wide receivers, one really good tight end, and two really good quarterbacks. And you have zero depth. If this was a start seven, you would be laughing. But because this is a start 10, can you even fit a 10-man lineup with this right now? Let's do the math right now. Patrick Mahomes, Kyler Murray is your quarterback and your super flex. Jonathan Taylor, Devon Achan is your two running backs. Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, and Mike Williams, I guess, is your wide receiver three. Your tight end is George Kittle. And then at that point, it's like, what, your two flexes are Greg Dolchich and who? Rico Dowdle. <laughs> Rico Richie Dowdle, Jane. Andre Osevis, Ose like Malik Keith. Like, who's your, who's your second flex? The nice thing is you do you have, have the 105, the 106, 107, and 110 this year. I don't know if he has none of his future picks there in 2025. Maybe he traded them. Maybe he just didn't list he them. Traded away exactly three sure. He traded away three 2025 ones in the Patrick Mahomes deal. So I'm assuming he probably doesn't have any future picks. Okay. So, I mean, the nice thing is that it's good to be in this position. You have the draft capital. You could trade down yeah. from these picks, which is what I would be looking to do personally. Absolutely. Because you have the 105, 106, 107, and 110. As it stands right now in a super flex format, that would be uh, Malik Neighbors slash Jaden Daniels. 
Romo Dunze, Brock Bowers, and Ladd McConkie, Xavier Worthy, or Brian Thomas, given my rankings. But knowing that there's some quarterback assets in there, J.J. McCarthy, Jaden Daniels, whoever is available potentially in that 105 to 107 range, I would be looking to trade down, collect some second rounders. This is a deep class. You're going to be able to throw a lot of darts at the wide receiver and running back position and kind of hope that your team can mature into a competitive roster based on your ability to draft. The other alternative is that you could sell some of these for a package of veterans. Like sometimes I've noticed, I don't know if you've noticed this, Danny, sometimes some people are trying to rebuild to the point that they'll sell a package of three or four productive for 85% veterans for the one cost. really good draft pick. Yeah, well, that or like it's 85% of the cost because it's bundled production from one manager who is trying to tank. Uh, the one thing I will say, by the way, so it does say he has the 110 here. I'm assuming he does not because he says here February 11th, he traded away the 103, the 110, the 110 for Kyler in the, uh, in the 207. So I believe that should say that he has the 105, the 106, the 107 in the 207. So regardless, though, like Corey said, like you got to make a way for those assets to net you more assets. Cause it's kind of the inverse of the last position where we're talking about, you have a lot of middling production, but you don't have any studs. You have all the studs, but you don't have anything after that. Yeah. Also, I feel like Devon H has been on every single team of this video so far, which is hilarious, but yeah, I mean, is there a guy in your league that has a really mid roster that would give you Keenan Allen, Deontay Johnson, Marquise Brown, and Chase Brown for 107 and 207? You know what I mean? Like you might be able, like, again, I do you do that. Yes or no. But the question is like, is there guys in your league that are looking to sell off a lot of competitive assets? Those are the teams that I would be approaching about potentially trading up in the rookie draft. What if they're trying to do, maybe they're just trying to sell their, their productive players for pieces right away. Because if you did say hypothetically, add. Keenan Allen, Marquise Brown, Deontay Johnson, and two other like zero RB type guys at running back, you could absolutely win with this team. So you're yes. not that far off. And again, worst case scenario, you're going to probably line up Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze, Brock Bowers in the rookie draft, and at 207, take another wide receiver. And then maybe you could tear down with one of your current assets if you wanted to. You could maybe take Jamar Chase and turn him into a number of pieces. But again, it's easier to find depth than it is to find yeah. um, to find studs. So Worst case scenario, spending those rookie picks will give you some depth as well. No, you're definitely in a good position. Like I'm, I'm making the joke because you have nothing after those players, but it's very easy to supplement the depth at this point, especially with the assets that you have. Corey had mentioned 107 Bowers. I'm not taking Bowers with this team. You have George Kittle. You have Greg Dolchitz. That's more than enough at tight end. I am yeah, instead trade down, that That's the best trade down pick probably that you yeah. have, to be honest. And the other thing too is that uh, JJ McCarthy might be a 107 option that you could either take or sell off sell to off. potentially move down. Like if you could move down, if if somebody gave you the 111 and two mid seconds this year for the 107, that's the type of deal that would make a lot of sense for your team because then you could walk away with say at 111 Xavier Worthy at 204 and 205 you get Xavier Leggett and Keon Coleman and then suddenly you've built up a lot more depth yeah. for your wide receiver core. But then at that point, too, you can take one of your seconds, and if you really want a QB3, go buy Geno Smith. Go buy Matthew Stafford. Go buy one of those guys. Because realistically, you don't need a quarterback three that has the ascension opportunity. Like, obviously, JJ would be nice on your team because he's got the opportunity to really increase in value. But you only need a QB3 to be a, uh, to be a productive roster or to be a, uh, a productive piece, to be honest, because Kyler Murray and Patrick Mahomes is going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Yeah, absolutely. It's not like, you know, whatever quarterback three you have is ever going to see the light of day in your lineup unless Kyler Murray or Patrick Mahomes are on by or injured. So yeah, finding depth shouldn't be too hard for you, but that is your primary goal. It's something that I would be looking to do. Work the board during the rookie draft. Potentially, if you have a good package deal on the table, that 207 maybe is able to buy you a good package deal of two like depth pieces potentially too. That's something you could think of doing. He does have some trades listed here, like you said. On uh, February 11th, he sold off the 103 and the 110 for Kyler and the 207. I think that was a fine price to pay. But to be honest, Kyler Murray is, is not really worth as much as you paid on the open market. I value him that much, but I do think yeah. you might have been able to get him for a little bit less than 103, 110. Um, because I do think a lot of people, like I think, would say Kyler Murray for the 103 straight up is probably a fair deal, no? Yeah, no, 100%. I, I, I get where you're coming from, but at the same time, yeah, like... The discrepancy between the 207 and the 110 on the open market is honestly larger than I've seen of that of the 103 and Kyler Murray. Because, I mean, I've seen in some startups that people have posted that like, Daniels or May go above Kyler Murray in some of those leagues. So I don't mind paying a little bit on top of whether it's Daniels or May, who you prefer at the 103. We would prefer May, but we've seen a lot of people valuing a guy like Jaden Daniels there. 
maybe if it was like that pick plus a second, I just don't really agree with giving up the 110 leverage here, knowing this position you need and knowing that that would also be another prime trade down spot. If you had held the 110, you could have possibly gotten the 203 plus the 206 for that. Yeah, not to mention the 103 is also a prime trade down spot too, given yeah. the quarterback nature if Jaden Daniels or if Marvin or something somehow had slid to that point. So again, giving up depth, I, I understand why you're in this position now because you gave up a lot of depth for the studs that you have. But the nice thing is, like we said, you still sure. have the assets to be able to replenish that depth, the three ones and the 204 and the 205 for Mahomes. Yeah, I'm right. fine with that trade. I actually think More you got for a nice little discount there. 108, yeah. 411, and the two fourths for A Chan. Again, I think that's yeah. pretty fair. I think you actually probably even got him for a little bit of a discount there. So um I, I like the moves that you made so far. Again, you just need to find a way to replenish some depth by trading down. Hopefully that's the dynamic of your league. Maybe because you were able to get these studs for the cheap. It is hard to get depth, but generally speaking, I think you should be fine. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a start 10, so it should be easier to find depth in that league versus if you had made all these moves and it, has, it was a start 13, I'd probably say you're cooked, but in a start 10, like you should be able to recapture the depth on this team, no problem. Yeah, absolutely. So again, if you guys did make it to the end of this video, leave us a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new around here. If you do want your team covered on the next Dynasty Decisions episode, the easiest way to have that done is by going to flockfantasy.com. Promo code FSE users will have access to these Dynasty Decisions videos, and you can skip the line ahead of all the free submissions. We did get to three in today's video. I'm glad we were able to get to some of them because I know a lot of you guys were waiting a long time. But again, if you want to skip the line, promo code FSE on Flock Fantasy is how you do that. And of course, as we talked about in the last two videos, if you want access to our new Dynasty Listener League, we will be drawing names for that on Saturday. So if you're listening to this and you are an annual Mother Flocker, annual Flocker subscriber on FlockFantasy.com, you will enter, you'll be entered into that contest, into that drawing to be in a league with us. It'll be a hundred dollar, hundred and fifty dollar buy-in, so a little bit more higher stakes maybe than some of you are used to, but it should be a ton of fun. Once you are a subscriber of ours, you could have signed up in uh, six months ago. You could have signed up today. It doesn't really matter. If you're a subscriber of ours on Flock Fantasy using promo code FSE, annual Flocker or annual Mother Flocker only, annual Flockers get one entry to the contest. Annual Mother Flockers get two entries to the contest. Fill out the Google form that's linked down below in the pinned comment in the description, and we will draw names like that uh, for that league, like I said, on Saturday at noon. So if that interests you, link down below in the pinned comment, like I said. But with that being said, peace out. And I'll talk to you soon.